I'm not sure where we are here. I'm very sorry. Uh, something with a little problem with my computer there. Um, and I don't know whether anybody's there with me. Um, if you are, if you, oh, we've got uh, my wife watching. Um, whether anybody else is there. Oh, yes, yes, we've got a couple coming back here. <sighs> oh, well, all is not, <laughs> all is not in vain. I don't know what's happened. My, my computer just froze. So um, hopefully some of you have got back to us. And we were just, we just finished our psalm and um, we're now into our reading from Acts. <laughs> and um, in Acts 20, Acts 20, verses 17 to 27. Right, it looks like quite a lot of you got back here now, so uh, we'll go ahead. So, Acts 20, verse 17. Paul sent to Ephesus for the elders of the church. When they arrived, he said to them, You know how I lived the first day? How I lived the whole time I was with you? From the first day I came into the province of Asia. I served the Lord with great humility and with tears, although I was severely tested by the plots of the Jews. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me, if only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace. Now I know that none of you among whom I have gone about preaching the kingdom will ever see me again. Therefore, I declare to you today that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not hesitated to proclaim to you the whole will of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Mm. You know, it must have been a very difficult, interesting time of overload in a sense. Here's Paul, he's been preaching around all of Asia and he's, he's done door to door he's done public worship in outside temples and all over and and he's really really worked hard shall we say um to proclaim the message of jesus and now he's gathered the the, the elders together and he's saying to them i might not be back from this but i'm off to jerusalem i, I you know i might not be coming back most likely the last time you'll ever see me. And then he says, but, you know, I've never stopped loving you and doing that work. And if my life is at an end, if I am to be killed, then my life matters nothing to me. As long as I can keep presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now I know that that's not for everyone. I know it's not for myself. We, we say we want to serve Jesus. We say we want to love God more and more. 
But I doubt many of us would uh, freely say, well, I don't care if I die, as long as I can keep presenting Jesus. To be honest, and I think we have to be honest with ourselves, most of us would most likely say, when I finish this cup of coffee, I'll think about presenting Jesus, but not until after I've gone and done my shopping. Oh, oh, and then I have to go and see the grandchildren. And you know, we can make up lots and lots of excuses because we do love Jesus and he knows that. We do love God and he knows that. And we know it. But sometimes we put it on a, a shelf, in a sense. Um, and you know, when we're children, the good things go on a shelf. And we just can't reach that shelf. And then, as we grow a bit taller, a bit older, a bit more wiser, suddenly we find out that the good thing has been moved onto the shelf above. And we're continually stretching. And when we say, yes, I love Jesus, when we say, yes, I want to proclaim his name, it's not that we're saying a lie. It's just that we don't have Paul's zeal and Paul's um, readiness to say, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to go out and tell people of Jesus, even if it means my death. And apparently there are more Christian martyrs now in this day and age than there were throughout the rest of the centuries, which is an amazing fact. But what it means is there are people who are willing to put their life, to lay down their life for Jesus. And that's, that's very hard for us, really. That's what we would call ordinary Christians who uh, worship in our, our church. And we very gladly go round and we talk to people. We, we um, invite them for coffees and we put on various events at church to bring people in. Burns nights and many other things. And coffee mornings. And, but it's a very different scenario for Paul isn't it and it's just that we're all different we're all given different jobs to do however I think what is important and what is the main point of this is we all have a part to play and we may not be willing to uh, to die or we may not be uh, immediately willing to die should we say we don't know what would happen if uh, we were invaded by people who uh, wanted to kill us um, but at this moment in time we're not in that situation we're not in Paul's situation however it is too easy to say I will after another cup of coffee and the thing that's always spurred me on is the fact that people out there are dying going to hell because they haven't heard the word of Jesus and that sort of kicks you into saying well hang on I'd better try and stop some of those people and that was the message perhaps that was given very much by by the preachers uh, you know um, 50 100 years ago we they talked a lot about hellfire and brimstone but God's word is no less direct now than it was then. Revelation is no less frightening now than it was then. 
So let's just remember that. Just remember how Paul was. And we'll go to our gospel reading, which is in John, John 17. You know, people don't like it when you talk about hell and hellfire. Um, and yet it's, it's a reality. It's the reality of the world we're in. If we believe in God, we've got to believe in the devil. So we look at, oops, I'm sorry. We look at John 17 and verses 1 to 11. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, for they are your, uh, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we a one. Praise be to God. I think that tempers somewhat the uh, the reading in Acts that, in one sense, that it gives us that um, understanding of, of of what Jesus was actually saying and what he said to us. I mean, he was saying it to the disciples, but it's 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 today. That's what the that's how the Bible's written, isn't it? That what it was said to the disciples is said to us in in that sense. And Jesus said to his father, "You know, they are one as we are one." <sighs> that's amazing. It's utterly, utterly amazing that God loves us just as much as His Son. That we are as much one with him as he has with us. And that he has given us the name to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And that I find an overwhelming feeling of love, oneness. Being joined together with the Creator. And I, I just, I do feel overwhelmed by it. But he has given us the ability to speak with him. And to talk to him and to ask for those things that we desire. Those who are ill, we desire their health. And so let us come to a little time of prayer. Uh, we'll leave gaps and, and just remember those people whom, whom are particular to you. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this new day. 
keep us from falling into sin, running into danger, all running into danger, and guide us to do always what is right in your sight. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and the fearful. Lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we bring before you those who are ill, those that we know, those that are suffering under this COVID-19, COVID-19, COVID um, we just lift them before you, Lord. Lord, we think of those two who are suffering from this enforced lockdown. I'm just going to give you a, a, a few seconds just to, to think of those people in particular who you know are alone. Those who do tend to be depressed. Be with those people, dear Lord. And Father, we pray for our leaders, Lord, our, our government, who seem to be spending a lot of time back fighting. But we know that a lot of that is the media. Um, Lord, there are so many difficult things for them at the moment. And we pray for each one, whatever political side. Father, we pray too for our bishops, for Paul and for Sarah. Father, we pray for those who give them wisdom, Lord God. Yet let them be bold. And so, Lord, we pray for each other and for ourselves. Lord, at this time where we don't really see each other very much, we thank you that we have this method of communicating now. Oh God, help me to trust you. Mm -hmm. Help me to know that you are with me. And help me to believe and separate me from your love revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. 